My father was a was a merchant seaman, merchant seaman, and my mother was just domestic person, you know. Everybody is very poor, you know. It's only the rich people in Jamaica can buy them children instruments. So we weren't in that category that our families could have bought us instruments. So this friend of mine bought me my first trombone. You know, yeah. And when I buy the first trombone, everybody was glad for me, you know. So it, it was so shiny and pretty that my friend he used to clean it for me until he clean off all the brass, you know. So it was dull, you know. Yeah. Most of the, 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 the music in Jamaica at that time, you, you got to be playing uh, for the tourists in, in hotels like Montego Bay and Ocherius. I really never feel good in that way, you know, so always, I'm, I'm always in Kingston, popularizing myself with what's going on. You know. All the great musicians come from the ghetto. There is not one rich boy who can play instrument like we. None. None. It's only poor, poor people picnic can play like we, man. And that is an established order in Jamaica, you know. So, to be a good instrumentalist, I think you got to suffer. I think suffering is a part of being a good instrumentalist. For if, if you have too much of an easy life, you never be a good instrumentalist. You have to be a sufferer. All these years of suffering, it, 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 it gives you something that the other guy who don't suffer don't have, you know. So most of the poor people are more talented, hungry, barefoot. You understand? Because in Jamaica you have two classes of people, either rich or poor. You don't have no middle class. So, because of the suffering you got through, you endure it. You endure it. So when you play, I feel when I play my trauma, when I play a revolution, you know, yeah, personally, me. It's, it's a revolution. You know, yeah. I'm crying out loud to the world, you know, yes. We are the sufferers of the world. Before I was in the band, I was really heavily involved with Sharp and uh, Sharp, Skinheads Against Racial Prejudice. And I, I realized from that, the more that we would go out and with, with signs and picket and, you know, protest all these different things, the more they would too. And the more they'd be out in the streets, the more they'd be on the, on the uh, television. And then when I said, wait a minute, this is stupid. If we back away from this, if we stop, it stops, and it has. Or not completely, but as far as it being on the news every day and, you know, innocent people getting beat up by a group of skinheads, that stuff doesn't happen as much as it did. So we keep it out of our music as well. I mean, there were times when we got attacked by National Front and things. The coach got attacked and things, but... Um, but on the other hand, there's another side to it. It's like, you know, the idea was to get get through to those people and maybe change their minds or whatever. So, you know, the other way is to go and you're just playing to a load of students who you're, you're preaching to the converted anyway. Um, you see, I'm not into politics, you see. I'm into music. I'm into music. And they... Many times <coughs> when I was down, 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 not playing much, <coughs> and I played, I get lots of skinheads come to see me. So I love them. I don't like them, I love them. I love them. Probably, probably they don't love me from the heart. But I know lots of them love me as well. I sing the song that they like to hear, and that makes me happy. So right wing, left wing, north wing, it doesn't matter to me.